Hello, how's it going? Today we're going to talk about conflict and the nature of conflict and what's really happening when we get into conflict. This is going to empower you to reduce conflict in your relationship, to start to turn conflict into moments of opportunity where you can heal and work towards uh, a more intimate, better relationship uh, with yourself and with your loved ones. So, you can picture everybody as having a different reality and this reality surrounds us like a bubble and what people feel is based on that bubble or based on their version of reality now, all conflict comes from two people operating with different versions of reality if they were operating from the same version of reality if they were in agreement then there would be no conflict there would be nothing to disagree about so once we realize that, once we realize that everyone has their own version of reality, we can start to work to understand and integrate their version of reality into ours, meaning we can communicate, we can achieve mutual understanding, and we can resolve conflict that we may have had for a long time. So, what's important to realize is that this bubble that surrounds us, this reality that surrounds us, it influences all information coming in. So when energy, information, uh, experiences uh, hit the outer layer of that bubble, that energy and information, it gets distorted by the bubble. And what we see ultimately is not reality that said, it is reality after getting distorted by our bubble. That's why people can get so upset and so angry about little things. It's because however that experience interacted with their reality, with their bubble, happened to, cause, happened to look a lot different than maybe how it looked through the lens of your bubble. This is a very empowering thing because it means that first, we can learn how to find what in our bubble made things look so bad and scary and therefore, we can become empowered to release all of our negative reactions, negative thoughts, negative emotions, and aversions to things in our relationships and in our lives. That means that we can free ourselves from negative emotions and negative thoughts. The other thing it means is that we can learn to understand and map out our partner's bubble. Meaning that we can get to know how certain energies, certain things we do, certain things we say, certain types of information, certain processes, how they affect their bubble so that we can optimally manage the situation so that we can trigger them less and so that we can communicate to them. And that's a great thing. Once we start to operate in our relationship that way, we're operating consciously. We're operating by being conscious of their system, by being conscious of the ways in which they'll react to certain things we say and do. And when we do that, we can reduce conflict a lot and proactively. Now this bubble, it can have a very strong influence on everything that we think, feel, say, or do. And we would say that it is one of the primary influences on that. And the bubble is actually made up of our past, our interpretations of past experiences. It's made up of our memories and it's made up of our beliefs and our different expectations and uh, judgments and, and, and roles, roles that we believe in, meaning a father should do this, a husband should do that, a wife should do this, which ultimately dictate uh, the way in which we interact with other people. And, and you could say that this bubble is our ego. And truly, there are many things in our ego that we might not know exist. And for example, we have uh, conscious aspects of our ego and we have subconscious aspects of our ego. We have conscious beliefs and expectations and fears and judgments and we have subconscious beliefs, expectations, fears and judgments. And as we interact with each other, we're constantly interpreting each other's actions and words and, and the future and the past through the lens of our own personal beliefs, expectations, judgments and fears, which have come from our interpretations of past experiences that we've stored in our minds, in our bodies, and um, that we use to make up our self-image. And so 
when we realize this, we can realize that, hey, as long as I have this bubble, I will experience distortion and misinterpretation in my life. If there's a bubble, then energy is going to hit the surface of that bubble and get distorted. And if we want to live without distortion, if we want to see what is, then it's important that we start to uh, break down the bubble. And what's great about this is that we can start to break down the parts of the bubble that cause our negative thoughts, emotions, and relationship conflict. We can start with the biggest pain points. And when we do that, we start to feel better and better. We improve our lives. We start to see things more clearly. We start to have better relationships. We start to achieve more of our goals. And uh, we feel more empowerment. We feel like, oh my gosh, this is pleasant. I'm on this enjoyable spiritual path. And truly, this is a spiritual process. And it's a spiritual process because once you start to break down this bubble, what you'll find is that you'll start to see what is more. And what is, you could say, and in my opinion, is God. And as you start to see God, as you start to see the miracles that happen every day, as you start to see all of the unconditional love that is available to us, you'll start to operate uh, beyond the ego, selflessly. And you'll start to, when people are rude to you, or when your partner says something that's really, that used to be really hurtful, instead of taking that personally and getting upset and getting angry, you'll see, wow, they must feel a lot of pain. And you'll be able to actually see that pain. And you'll actually be able to see also the origination source of that pain. Meaning, for example, if you see someone going to uh, a bank and rob the bank, and he pushes people around and he hurts people in the bank, you're going to think, man, that guy's a jerk. That said, if you were to see that in his childhood or her childhood, from the ages of, you know, three years old to 12 years old, that child was abused over and over every day and felt unloved and uncared for and like they were a bad person, then you would see and have the compassion that that sight would give you. And when you break down your bubble, when you stop taking things personally, when we stop getting our fears triggered by the actions of others, when we start feeling hurt or angry or judgmental, we can actually see why people are doing the things they're doing. In other words, we can see what they've accumulated in their bubble or their ego, and thus we're able to see why they're doing the things they're doing. And when we do that, we become very empowered to actually help the people that we're in relationships with, to help them grow beyond their limiting patterns, grow beyond their anger, grow beyond their judgment, grow beyond their victimhood because we can literally see why they're feeling those things. And so we can communicate things that will help them realize, hey, you're safe, you're loved, I understand. And when we operate that way in the relationship, we're able to act as a mirror, meaning that someone who might not be so into introspection or self-awareness, when we start to operate as a mirror, meaning we respond to their actions and words and judgments, we respond consciously, intentionally, understandingly, and with compassion. And by seeing why they're doing what they're doing, when we act as a mirror in that way, they then gain the capacity to see different parts of themselves that they used to not be able to see. And the best example of this is, or an example of it, is have you ever seen or been in an argument or a conflict where your parts, uh, partner said something to you and maybe it was harsh and judgmental and it bothered you and you took it personally and so you said something back and you reacted. Well, who learns in that situation? It, we could say that the opportunity for learning has been buried underneath the, the conflict that goes back and forth. Now, if instead you, they said something that was really harsh and, and, and really rude. And you saw it for what it was. You saw that they were in pain. You saw that they were in fear. You saw that, that this was coming from pain from their past. And uh, it had nothing to do with you at all. If you saw that, then it wouldn't bother you. You wouldn't get upset. You wouldn't get angry. And you might respond with, oh, that's okay. And what that would give them the opportunity to do is instead of walking away because you, you know, criticize them and they're like, oh, I can't believe they said that to me. Instead of walking away like that, 
they might walk away thinking, huh, I said those things and they didn't even react. In fact, they responded with love and understanding. Now that's really, why did I say those things in the first place? Huh. And see, in that way, when we respond with understanding and compassion and patience and calmness, we give our partners the opportunity to reflect on why they did what they did. Not in a way of guilting them, and I don't recommend doing that. And You're not doing this from a self-righteous platform or feeling like you're better than them. You're doing this with real compassion, with real understanding, with real recognition that you know, it really was not personal and that they didn't do anything wrong or bad by doing what they did and that, that, that it's okay, that what they did is okay. And, and when you do that, when, when you do that, they can learn from it because when we say, hey, what you did was not okay, then how can they pick it up and look at it and, and study it to learn from it? If it's not okay, they're not going to want to pick it up. They're going to want to de- put it down. They're going to want to deny it. They're going to want to avoid it, reject it, suppress it. And when we create suppression in ourselves and in our partners via conflict, via judgment, uh, via reacting to each other emotionally, via not being understanding and compassionate, when we create suppression like that, we actually create distance between us and the different experiences that we could learn from, the different parts of ourselves that we could learn from and release and clear and heal. And therefore, once we healed those parts, to have positive change and progress and better relationships. If you didn't realize that everyone lives in their own reality and we assume that there was one reality, then we might say to our partner and act with our partner in a way that says, you're being wrong, you're being bad, you're not seeing the truth. And if we do that, we're essentially rejecting their bubble. And when you reject someone's bubble, it's actually a much bigger thing than it might sound like because you're rejecting their ego, which is their sense of identity, which is basically the self-defense mechanism that they've created to protect themselves from their past pain and trauma. All those beliefs and expectations and judgments people create are self-defense mechanisms that make up their bubble. They're self-defense mechanisms that create their ego. And it is my perception that we all have the capacity, and I've seen this happen, and I've done it myself, to start to disassemble our bubble, to start to take it apart. And, And the sage masters the enlightened beings that I feel are truly enlightened, I perceive to have all done this and to have completely actually cleared their ego and to be operating from consciousness, which is different than operating from beliefs, expectations, judgments, or fears. And as a result of clearing their bubble, they're actually able to see what is. They're able to remain resonant with God, with unconditional love, with equanimity, which is the capacity to see all experiences, things, and beings as equal and therefore retain inner peace at all times, uh, with self-sovereignty, which means to be able to make conscious choices for yourself, make conscious, wise, discerning choices for yourself, regardless of what other people think you should do or feel about you. And, and it's also the capacity to feel the way you want to feel on the inside, regardless of how other people feel about you. And, and these are wonderful things. These things are empowering. They allow us to, to achieve healing in the world for ourselves and for others and to have great relationships. And that doesn't mean that it's easy to get there. And and that's because when our partner says something that's really triggering to us, or does something that's really triggering to us, we feel it, it feels strong. And sometimes we can feel like intense anger, judgment, hatred. We can feel like we don't care about the relationship. We can feel like they don't care about the relationship. We might feel like uh, the relationship's not important to us. And and that, They can uh, just leave and we don't care. And these feelings can be so strong that we can make decisions from them and yell and say things that we don't really mean later. And we can do things like storm out or say we want a break or say we want a divorce. 
and uh, only realized later that you know maybe there was another way <laughs> and that we were really triggered and that we got really upset and that everything looked really terrible and frightening when we felt that way that said it's not really how we feel or what we consciously want in our lives that we do consciously care about them and that we do consciously um, want the relationship the reason why this happens is because inside our bubble uh, when we get triggered it's like a movie plays on the inside of the bubble and typically the movie that plays is the movie um, that represents exactly what we fear most and all of our and it's made of all of our past pain and trauma so basically what we're doing is in an effort to defend ourselves and protect ourselves and stay safe we're taking all of our recorded prior uh, pain from the past and um, we're trying to prevent it from happening again and so we're constantly scanning the environment for traces of it ways in which it could repeat you might see this if if a if in a relationship where a uh, someone has been cheated on they might carry that forward into their future relationship and uh, when their partner gets home late they might actually blame their partner for cheating on them or project that onto them when that wasn't what was going on at all <clears throat> so as you can see um, the partner came home late right that was the reality or the, the the real reality the partner came home late that's it and uh, when that reality hits the bubble of the person who's been cheated on in the past, it gets distorted, and to them it looks like, oh, this person's cheating on me. And, and then, from, from the inside of the bubble, we project that onto reality, that what's going on here is that my partner's cheating on me. And so then, if we're seeing that movie, it's hard not to emotion, I mean, we will emotionally react as if that's going on, so we're gonna feel really intensely afraid, angry, <clears throat> betrayed, and then we're usually going to say things and do things as if that's going on. Which can lead to a lot more conflict that was, in a way, unnecessary. In another way, uh, when these things get triggered in ourselves because of, for whatever reason, when, when we get triggered into our negative emotions and negative thoughts inside our bubble, and as a result of our bubble, what it is doing is actually highlighting those old pains and old traumas that we're still carrying. And that is great, that's a gift. And by realizing that, you can, instead of reacting to the negative emotion and negative thought you feel, you can say, huh, you know, in the past, I used to project that this and this was happening, that this was bad, that the relationship was gonna end, and that, you know, when the relationship ended, I would be all alone, or <sighs> all these bad things would happen. And instead, you can say, hey, I realize that I'm feeling a lot of negative thoughts and emotions. I realize that if I'm feeling it, it must be coming from my bubble, from my ego, from my interpretive mechanisms, from my process of projection. And I realize that this is actually helping me realize that I've had past pain and trauma stored in my system that I'm now projecting onto reality. And really that's true because if you had no memory at all, zero memory, zero past pain and trauma. There would be no pain and trauma for you to project onto the future. There would be none of it in your, in your bag that you could pull out and say, oh, this is happening again, or this is gonna happen in the future. And so those moments are giving you an opportunity to become aware of that past pain and trauma and then apply processes, techniques, meditative processes that you can do on your own to heal them so that you can actually permanently transcend the tendency to feel like, oh, your partner's bad or wrong, your partner doesn't like you, your partner doesn't love you, your partner's cheating on you, and all the different things that we might project in a given day or week or month onto our partner. And that process gradually starts to break down our bubble. And you can also see the bubble. Uh, before I get into that, let me say this. What this means is that Nobody can make you feel anything. <laughs> if you think of uh, a sage master, uh, an enlightened being, they walk around, the truly enlightened beings, with a steady state of, in a cons consistent state of inner peace and unconditional love for themselves and others and resonance with God. And uh, if someone throws a, you know, a tomato at them, <laughs> they're still peaceful. They're not, they typically don't pick up the tomato or and curse at the person they remain in peace and they even respond with unconditional love 
And the reason they do that is because they no longer have a bubble and so they can really see what's going on. They can see that the person who threw that tomato at them or that slapped them in the face or that called them this terrible name, they can see that the actions of that person are not based on any negative things about themselves. They know that the actions of that person are based on that person's obscurations, their fears, their ignorance, their ignorance in a good way, not a bad way. Ignorance is just not having awareness. And uh, that person's um, judgments. And, 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 and truly, those are all based on their prior pain. And from that vantage point, the enlightened being can have true, complete compassion for that person. And if the enlightened being says, oh, you know, this person's throwing tomatoes on me, these tomatoes could hit me in the head and I could go unconscious and I could die. If the enlightened being or, or other people could start throwing tomatoes at me and that would be bad because I'd be disrespected. If the enlightened being did that, then they would be getting triggered into fear, which would usually mean that they haven't reached a high enough state of enlightenment um, to transcend negative thoughts, negative emotions, and ego. In, in which case, I would say, personally, that they're not quote-unquote enlightened, defining the, a minimum point of enlightenment as um, transcending ego. And now, just because a spiritual person might have this goal of transcending ego and reaching enlightenment, doesn't mean that you need to have that goal in order to experience the benefits of this understanding in your relationship. You can still experience the benefits of this understanding. And if you choose to, you can adopt the goal of deconstructing your bubble. And that's really helpful because if, if you're not deconstructing your bubble, you're just reliving your prior pain. And that, that cyclical process it, it doesn't really lead to personal growth. And not, you know, not everyone wants to focus on um, personal growth at certain times, and that's okay. It's important to be understanding of those people. Now, the more we do this for ourselves, the more you do this for yourself in your relationship, if you're not with someone who is um, spiritually oriented or self-growth oriented, uh, the more you'll embody the, this behavior, the more you'll model it, the more you'll be compassionate and understanding, the more they'll feel unconditional love, and therefore, the safer they'll feel. And therefore, the more likely they'll be to start modeling some of these behaviors as well. So truly, just by applying this in your life, you'll be able to help your partner start applying it in their lives too. And yes, the best way to see the change that you want is to be that change and therefore to embody it and to model it because that's how people learn the best. Now I know that was a lot of information. If you re-listen to that video each time, you should be able to gain something new. And uh, if you'd like to find more information like this, uh, you can check out uh, John Jones's books, Enter the Era of Empowerment and uh, A World Without Fear. They're available on Amazon. Uh, that book has a lot of great information. and. Uh, it's where I've learned a lot of this, as well as working directly with John Jones. Um, if you're having issues in your relationship and in your life, like negative thoughts, negative emotions, or conflict that you're looking for help with, I strongly recommend one-on-one -on -one facilitation from someone that understands this type of information. And that is a, a service that Alessandrina and I offer. Uh, you can check out our website at dexteralessandrina.com, and there's more information about this video and uh, more information like this and about this in the uh, description of this video below. And uh, if you if you like this and you want to stay uh, up to date when we release more videos like this, please like our channel and subscribe. And uh, if you feel that this information will help others, please share. Thank you very much, and uh, we're very happy that you're you're with us and, and watching this and. Uh, Thank you.